dear students let us now study the accessory organs of eye the function of these accessory organs is to protect the eyeball and for the movement of the eyeballs so what are the organs that are concerned with protection of the eyeball they are the eyelids and lacrimal apparatus and for the movement there are what are known as extrinsic muscles of the eyeball that facilitate movement of the eye the eye is a delicate organ and it has to be protected there are several structures that are protecting it what are those structures observe here it is the eyebrows that project, protect it then there is the eyelids upper eyelid and lower eyelid and at the margins of the lids you will see the eyelashes and then part of the lacrimal apparatus which you are seeing here is the lacrimal gland and a duct opening into the conjunctival sac and you can see the eyeball with extra ocular muscles in this picture now look at the picture we are seeing the eye which eye it is a right eye and we can see the eyebrows and which will form two arched ridges over the supra orbital margin of the frontal bone numerous hairs the eyebrows they are projecting from the surface of the skin in a oblique direction and they are protecting the anterior aspect of eyeball from the sweat dust and foreign bodies now look at the two movable folds of tissue that are called the eyelids there is one above the front of the eye and one below the front of the eye and they are called the eyelids this is the upper eyelid and this is the lower eyelid and this is the medial angle or medial canthus the lateral angle or the lateral canthus so there are the three edges of the eyelids that contain short curved hairs which are called eye lashes so you could identify the eyelids and the eye lashes and the meeting point of the eyelids medially is the medial canthus is the medial angle and laterally is the lateral canthus lateral angle of the eye then what are all the layers of tissue that are forming the eyelids so details of the eyelids those who can follow follow them so what are those layers starting from the skin there is the loose areolar tissue so skin and loose areolar tissue or thin then it contains the muscles what are those muscles they are the orbicularis oculi and levator palpebrae superioris muscles then it has got the dorsal plate a dense connective tissue layer dense connective tissue layer dorsal plate you are seeing which is larger in the upper eyelid than the lower eyelid and it supports the other structures then it will have a conjunctival lining and you will be seeing some glands also so 
the layers of the eyelid or the skin and loose areolar tissue the muscles orbicularis oculi and levator palpebrae superioris then the dorsal plate then the conjunctival lining see further details of the eyelids so their margin and the glands that are seen in the eyelid there are what are known as the sebaceous glands of g's so along the edges of the lids they are numerous in number and some of them they have got their ducts opening into the hair follicles of the eyelashes and some of them will open into the margins between the hairs then the sweat glands of mall are seen in relation with the lid margin then there are the dorsal glands or meibomian glands which are modified sebaceous glands that are embedded in the dorsal plate the connective tissue part with the ducts that will open on the inside of the free margins of the eyelids so the function of these glands is they secrete eye material that spreads over the conjunctiva during blinking movements and it delays evaporation of tears so the three types of glands that are seen in the eyelids are the sebaceous glands of g's sweat glands of mall and the meibomian glands the modified sebaceous glands these glands secrete oily material that will spread over the conjunctiva during blinking movements and this material delays evaporation of tears now let us see the muscles that are concerned with the movements of the eyelids here you are seeing a muscle that is encircling the eyelid like a sphincter so this is a sphincteric muscle known as the orbicularis oculi this is the orbicularis oculi muscles and look at the other muscle so which is getting attached to the superior dorsal plate in relation with the upper eyelid and this is called the levator palpebrae superioris muscle what are the functions of eyelids and eyelashes they protect the eye from injury reflex closure of the lids occurs when conjunctiva or eyelashes are touched or when an object comes close to the eye or when a bright light shines into the eye so the reflex response under these conditions is we try to close the eyes and how the lids are getting closed and this is called conjunctival or corneal reflex so reflex closure of eyelids when eyelashes are conjunctival or touched or when an object is coming close to the eye or when bright light is falling onto the eyes blinking movements occur at about 3 to 7 seconds intervals they spread the tears and oily secretions over the cornea so the spreading of these secretions tears and oily secretions over the cornea prevents drying of the cornea when the orbicularis muscle contracts the eyes will close when the levator palpebrae muscle contracts the eyelids will open so contraction of orbicularis oculi closes the eyes contraction of levator palpebrae superioris opens the eyelids
Now let us see what is lacrimal apparatus and what are the parts in it. So this is concerned with production of tears and the circulation of tears. So what are the components of the lacrimal apparatus? They are the lacrimal gland. This is the lacrimal gland and then there are number of ducts from the lacrimal gland that will be opening into the conjunctival sac and then there are the two lacrimal puncta at the medial angle or near the medial canthus and then there are the two lacrimal canaliculi an upper one and a lower one then the lacrimal sac and the naso lacrimal duct which is opening into the nasal cavity or see so the parts of the lacrimal apparatus are the lacrimal gland the lacrimal ducts conjunctival sac lacrimal puncta lacrimal canaliculi lacrimal sac and naso lacrimal duct what is this lacrimal gland? We are seeing it here. It's an exocrine gland and it is located in the frontal bone on the lateral aspect of each eye just behind the superior orbital margin or supraorbital margin. The function of this lacrimal gland is it secretes tears which contain water, minerals, salts, antibodies and a bactericidal enzyme lysozyme. Then the lacrimal ducts. So the tears they leave the lacrimal gland by several small ducts. So that will be passing over the front of eye under the eyelids towards the medial canthus of the eye. This will be moving. Now let us see what is conjunctiva. We are seeing here the conjunctiva. So it covers the sclera anteriorly. You are seeing the sclera covered by the conjunctiva. And it is a fine transparent membrane. And it lines the eyelids and also the front of the eyeball. It secretes mucus to lubricate the I. There are two types of conjunctiva. One in relation with the cornea is known as the bulbar conjunctiva. The other in relation with the lids palpebral conjunctiva. The bulbar conjunctiva is less vascular stratified epithelium. This is the bulbar conjunctiva. Whereas the palpebral Conjunctiva, which is seen in relation with the lids. It is highly vascular columnar epithelium. What is conjunctival sac? When the eyelids are closed, the two eyelids, when they are coming closer, the, it closes the eyelids and the conjunctival sac becomes a closed sac. The function of the conjunctiva is to protect the delicate cornea and the front of the eye. When we administer eye drops, they are placed in the lower conjunctival sac. Then what is lacrimal punctum and lacrimal canariculi? And in this picture, you can observe the location of the lacrimal gland. And then the, you can see the smaller lacrimal duct and this is the conjunctiva, the corneal or bulbar conjunctiva. And then you can see at the medial angle of the eye, there is a, what is known as carankel you will see separating the two lid margins. 
and then here there will be what are known as the lacrimal puncta the upper one and lower one we are seeing then two lacrimal canaliculi so the opening of this lacrimal canaliculi is the lacrimal puncta and then the two canaliculi they will be laying one over the other and are separated by a small red body that is called the carankil so you could identify what is lacrimal punctum lacrimal canaliculi and the carankil in this picture then coming to the lacrimal sac so what is this lacrimal sac it is the upper expanded part of a duct called the naso lacrimal duct in this picture you are seeing the lacrimal gland which has got a larger part and a smaller part separated by a septum which is formed by the aponeurosis of levator palpebrae superioris muscle and you can see the smaller ducts opening into the superior conjunctival fornix and we can see the two lacrimal puncta the lacrimal canaliculi and the expanded lacrimal sac in relation with the lacrimal bone and then its continuation the naso lacrimal duct which will open into the inferior meatus of nasal cavity so the lacrimal sac is expanded part of naso lacrimal duct and naso lacrimal duct is about 2 cm in length and it opens the nasal cavity at the level of inferior nasal concha what are the functions of lacrimal apparatus the fluid that is filling up in the conjunctival sac consists of tears and oily secretions of tarsal glands and it is spread spread over the cornea during blinking moments what are the functions of this fluid they will be washing away the irritating material example dust and grit they are bacteri bactericidal because it contains the enzyme lysogen which prevents microbial infection the oiliness of the secretions delays evaporation and prevents drying of conjunctiva and this fluid provides nourishment to the cornea then now let us consider what are extraocular muscles of the eyeball and their location origin insertion their nerve supply and actions of this muscles the extraocular muscles that are surrounding the eyeball or broadly classified into recti the oblique and a levator palpebrae superioris muscle what are those recti there are four recti muscles they are surrounding the medial lateral superior and inferior aspect of the eyeball they are known as medial rectus which you can see here on the medial side of the eyeball and then there is the lateral rectus which is cut this is the lateral rectus and the superior rectus the inferior rectus there are two oblique muscles one is the superior oblique we are seeing passing through a pulley and the inferior oblique muscle which is getting attached to the eyeball 
this is the inferior oblique and this is the superior oblique and then the above all there is the levator palpebrae superioris muscle you are seeing this is the one in this table you are seeing the origins and actions and nerve supply of these muscles and all these muscles they are inserted into the sclera at various points and their origin most of them they have a common origin if you see in this table that is known as the annulus annulus of gin except the inferior oblique which takes origin from the maxilla and the levator palpebrae superioris from the sphenoid bone so they are getting inserted into the eyeball then what are their actions and their nerve supply you can see so the actions of the medial rectus lateral rectus the superior rectus the inferior rectus and the two oblique muscles so common is rotation but the direction of rotation will vary if you observe the medial rectus rotates the eyeball inwards the lateral rectus moves it outwards whereas the superior rectus moves the eyeball upwards and inwards whereas the inferior rectus rotates it downwards and inwards the superior oblique rotates the eyeball downwards and outwards whereas the inferior oblique rotates it upwards and outwards so the function of this levator palpebrae superior is is elevation of the upper eyelid then regarding the nerve supply you can observe in this table but the easiest way to remember is uh, this tip s o 4 l r 6 others 3 this 4 6 3 represent the cranial nerves so the 4 is the trochlear nerve the 6 is the abducens nerve third is the ocular motor nerve this rectus s o refers to superior oblique muscle which is supplied by the trochlear nerve l r represents the lateral rectus muscle which is supplied by the sixth nerve which is the abducens nerve then all the other muscles that is the medial rectus and then the superior rectus the inferior rectus the inferior oblique and levator palpebrae superioris these are supplied by the third or ocular motor nerve now in this picture you could identify the extraocular muscles of the eyeball and in this simplified picture we can see the actions of the muscles so this is a medial this is lateral this is superior and this is inferior so any movement of the eyeball upwards is elevation downwards is depression and medially is adduction laterally is abduction and the movement of falvoclack position of the cornea inwards or medially internal rotation outwards or laterally it's called external rotation so this will facilitate in understanding the movements of the various muscle so what muscle produces adduction the medial rectus what produces abduction the lateral rectus and 
what will be the action of the superior rectus elevation what will be the action of the inferior rectus depression and similarly for the obliques also you can learn what will be the action of the superior oblique and the inferior oblique in addition to producing the respective movements of adduction or abduction now observe this picture showing the both the eyeballs and see the directions for each of the eyeballs towards the midline and away from the midline and upwards downwards and in the clockwise direction the anti clockwise direction this is again clockwise and this is anti clockwise so if you understand these arrows you can easily tell about the movements of the extra ocular muscles of eyeball for example see the superior rectus by looking at the arrows you can say it produces elevation adduction the intorsion the intorsion movement in the clockwise direction the medial rectus you can easily understand it produces the movement of adduction the inferior rectus produces depression the adduction movement and anti clockwise movement which is called the extorsion then the superior oblique produces depression adduction and the intorsion movement the lateral rectus produces abduction the inferior oblique produces abduction the elevation and extorsion movements in this picture also you can understand the movements of the various muscles movements of the eyes to look into a particular direction is under the voluntary control but coordination of movement that is required for convergence and accommodation to a nearby object or a distant object that is for near vision or distant vision is under autonomic control that is it is involuntary the movement of convergence and accommodation is involuntary now you have understood what are the accessory structures in relation with the eyeball